Life is a dance floor. God, God is, is the a DJ. DJ. Love, Love is a, a battlefield or something Love like that. Love is a music. Love is a <laughs> God is a no, DJ. Life, Life is, a dance, is a dance floor. I'm gonna move it or something. Like <laughs> Where are the music? What's good, everybody? <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Good Influences. <laughs> Today we're talking all about music. <laughs> I'm Mike Sheffer. Oh, we should have is... harmonized. Did I say howdy, howdy, folks, last episode? Or I did I say so. what's good? I think okay. you said what's My good. Um, but I'm Mike Sheffer. This is Carly Contro, Aaron Gilfoy, and Matthew King. Matthew. I didn't introduce us last time. It's okay. okay. I think I know who Fine. we are at this point. I realized it, but I didn't want to say anything to make you look, you know. What is music? <laughs> <laughs> you music. are the music in me. I, I've heard about it. I know it exists. <laughs> yeah. I've heard it. You've, uh, heard, you've heard of music? <laughs> yeah. I've heard a tune or two in my time. Do you guys know music theory? Mike, mm. we're not doing this. <laughs> I always think that's He's a silly, really a, a really silly question, though, where people are like, do you like music? Like, of course, I think everybody likes music. No, dude, there are some people who just don't listen to music. Is that true? Yeah. Like, do you think there's a difference between listening to it and liking it? No, like, I think there's a big group of people that will just like never think to put on a song. They don't really like a favorite song. They're never going to go to a concert. I cannot understand that, but like, you're just in a car with someone and they're just like, don't I put do on that. a song. <laughs> yeah, I do that. No one goes crazy. Like, <laughs> I need something on. You just sit in silence? Huh? You Like, you don't have anything playing? Well, I usually do, but I can drive with nothing. Got it, got it. But yeah. usually I put on a podcast. I don't really listen to music. When anymore. I drive, I don't listen to music because yeah. it makes the drive seem like really, I don't long. know, long and yeah. repetitive. Um, unless there's like a really catchy new tune I can't get out of my head. Like, yeah. For example, on the way here, we listened to Machine Gun Kelly. Oh, yes. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. When, that I think when fan. it's more than two people, music is more of like a communal thing in the car. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, but and I love those starting like my day or my evenings by playing music. I realize it's like my new antidepressant. It gets me like just so. Oh, like, really? Mo- oh, I, I love it. Me, the energy like vibrates like throughout the house and everyone like suddenly <laughs> is in a really good mood because there's like some good tunes playing. What did you play today? Um, Today I actually didn't play anything because it was a little too early in the morning. But uh, I've been playing a lot of Prince lately. The purple. Oh, oh yeah. The- Wait, I feel like I saw you listening to that on Spotify. Oh, yeah, I shared it. I'm like, I just love this album a lot. Oh, that's Be- what it was. You put it on Instagram. Because I really want to watch the movie Purple Rain, but I want to familiarize myself with the album so well so it's going to be like such it an experience sense. to see this whole album long music video movie and it's really great love that so i don't know i'm on a prince kick i try to like listen to a new i don't know artist that like i feel like i need to know their discography better than i do yeah I, like, like david some, yeah. bowie like really listening to his albums yeah or like Queen, like no no one really knows them besides for the hits, but I'm what? sick of Queen. <laughs> really? I am sick of Queen. Bohemian Rhapsody, that movie came out and suddenly everybody loves Queen. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, but they've like been pretty I, famous for a while, that's why they made the movie. Dude, but some of their music, man, it's like you hear it so much like pop it's like pop hit radio. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Where it's like Bohemian Rhapsody when that song, that song comes on, it, it's it used to like be a so meme. fun. Now it's like, here we go. Yeah, now it's like a meme, but I know I love fucking all and that's my opinion. <laughs> and that's and my, my opinion. opinion. Should we take it back to the early days? I, I was curious about this. What is the first CD oh, that you ever owned slash purchased? Like, what's the first one that was like, I this re- is mine? I remember my first cassette. Cassette. Oh, my God. And it was okay, my but... first and my last cassette. Okay. Oh, no. It was uh, Backstreet Boys, their Which, first album? album. Their first one. The one where they're standing up against, like, the like a wall. And, and like they the all, back like, street. Looking, they're, like, looking cool. But yeah, it's called Backstreet, right? Yeah, I think I so. I think it is. Yeah, Backstreet Boys. I mean, if we're talking first, it was probably, like, Raffi. <laughs> that you owned a Raffi CD? Probably. Who's Raffi? The... He, he was like in the '90s, like yeah, a like, like a, a singer. Kids thing. Yeah, it was like a kid singer. You know, it was like Disney hits. Like oh. those were definitely like my first CDs. But do you do you have like a recollection of you like owning Going? your first CD? No, I mm. couldn't tell you which one it was, but it was probably like you know Backstreet Boys or like Britney Spears yeah. or something like that. Mine was the Oops, I Did It Again. Oh. Or no, Baby One More Time. And it was the uh, CD, the flower, the pink one. Yes, it was pink. Oh, it gives me chills. Then there was also a nostalgic. blue one. Remember yeah, there was like a versions. peach and a blue one. I yeah. think one was special like special edition or something deluxe album. Yeah. Yeah, or it was one of them was like the EP and one of them was a full oh. album. I can't oh. remember exactly. But I wanted to talk about really tangent really quick yeah. about the cassettes. I saw a TikTok the other day of a girl who got the Harry Styles. I guess he did limited cassettes or whatever. And it was so crazy. I feel like I told you about this, but she was filming herself and she was like, how do I open this? She couldn't figure out how to open it. And she was like, my mom's 
a millennial like she'll definitely know so she asked her mom and her mom was like oh my gosh and just showed her how to do where it where is she listening to it i i don't know probably got like a cheap cassette she didn't know how to something. open the plastic that just you had know, the cassette in no. it no you know how there's like a little ledge that's yeah, like yeah she kept slide it out she kept trying to like oh open it that, that way it. and she was like oh, what the God. fuck she's like how do i open this i just feel like by trial and error you'll eventually get there <laughs> i know it's it really opens easy. like a book. Like, yeah yeah, kind of. yeah like, just like yeah. the long side just yeah just open oh my god that is Old. That makes me feel when our parents were like, "Remember eight tracks?" <laughs> I'm like, yeah. "Remember cassettes?" Oh yeah. But I hate when boomers are like, oh, "You'll see a Buzzfeed video of like, here, try using a record player, or like dialing a rotary phone," and it's like, "How about you export a PDF and <laughs> yeah. like, try, like, don't yeah, come yeah, at me yeah, for yeah. not knowing how to make use this real. mechanical <laughs> thing." For the, yeah, make upload an Instagram reel, please. Like, <laughs> and edit it good. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's funny. I had a rotary phone in my house. Yeah, me too. Up. Yeah. Damn. Oh, my like aunt's house basement, there was one. Yeah. It's so much fun to do a rotary I phone. Know. So fun. Did y'all listen to uh, Radio Disney at all growing up? Yes. Radio it was on AM. Disney. Yes. Remember it was like on AM yes. radio. AM radio. Disney <laughs> has all this money and they can only afford <laughs> playing it on AM radio? Well, I think Maybe has... they were like, it's exclusive. Well, <laughs> if it wasn't AM radio, you could listen to it in any state. I think that's why. I think FM is local. Oh, I think yeah. that's why. That so was it oh. AM 620? Radio Disney? That's what it was for me. I think so. What were like your FM radio station? Oh, 106.1 oh, Kiss FM, 97.9, the beat, the real <laughs> hip hop station. My, yeah, our hip hop station was Jimin 94.5. <laughs> <laughs> did, did they ever change the radio station number yes. and then they had a change? And you're just like, oh, this is not it. Like, I have a whole I have a whole thing about this. About oh, radio station I, numbers? Okay, so the one in Omaha was 98.5. It was called Sweet 98 and it was like top 40. And for some reason I was obsessed with the radio. Like, I don't know if I had like a weird form of OCD, but I would wake up in the middle of the night. What song is playing right now? Okay, good to know. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> Deadass. And I would call and request songs all the, I, I don't know if I had a life or what, but I was obsessed with it. I was always calling. I was watching, the, they had like little webcams and you could watch the DJs in the studio on their website. And so one day the radio station was staticky and it had a weird countdown it was like a robotic woman's voice being like 10 9 and it just kept doing it over and over and i was like what's going on and my uncle works in radio and he was like oh that means they're changing the station over to something else and i was like that was my first heartbreak i swear to god i was so upset by it and he was like they're changing it to more like alternative radio so i sent them an email <laughs> Like that, and I think I have it. Stop! I can search. No way! I'm pretty sure what? I have it. How, How old are you? What year are you sending when did you emails start and email? listening to the radio? I'll have to, it was like 2019. <laughs> oh wait, 2019? No, You're I think no, I'm kidding. Back. Like, what did you search? Because <laughs> um, <laughs> like, oh, I've done it before. I, it comes up pretty quick. How long have you had an email for? Jeez. And she's literally just. Scrolled. It was 2004. You had you email? Have an email? You still yeah. have access to all of those this, emails? I have the same email yeah. yahoo 2004 okay so how old was i then oh uh, well you were like in sixth freshman? grade like yeah no no 2005 no, 2004, 2004. Like 2004. Eighth or ninth grade i graduate no you graduate wait we're you're a year ahead of me right in school i graduated 20, in 09 2009 so you were in sixth or no you were in no. seventh grade you're in seventh grade okay yeah, that's that's oh, right. or seventh or eighth depending on what month yeah. it was Okay. Do you want to read the email? Yeah, I have it. Sorry. Oh my god, I'm like embarrassed. <laughs> I'm embarrassed already. I don't know what's gonna happen. That's insane that you have. What is it? A Gmail account? Yahoo. Yahoo. Yeah, I just don't Hotmail. Have it. MSN. Wait, how do you say it? <laughs> Yahoo. You said you said it's so cute. You're Yahoo? like Yahoo. I have a Yahoo. Oh my Yahoo. <laughs> Yahoo. Oh like god. Did you put the emphasis on the who? I have a Yahoo email. Yeah, who knows? I think I just say different Yahoo. depending on. It sounds like she said was... Yahoo. We gotta roll the tape back because however you said it first was so cute. Yeah, yeah, that's like she how said it sounded. Yahoo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yahoo. Yeah. Yahoo. So what oh, did you God. say, Carly? Well, it's weird because I emailed them a couple of times. <laughs> was there I, correspondence? I can't or... find the original one, did they but I know respond? it's here. Yes. Are you looking in your sent emails? Yeah, I mean, he, one of them is just, the the subject is Top 40, question <laughs> mark. Hi, I'm just curious if Watt Radio will be coming out with another Top 40 station because I really miss Sweet 98. Carly. But I know that there's a different one. <laughs> Hello, I'm a listener to, I think like the, I don't know what Watt Radio is. I think it controlled them all. <laughs> I'm a listener to Watt Radio Nebraska. And is recently, it? Sweet 98 was changed to Q98. 
<laughs> the music is all right, but I loved Sweet 98. <laughs> I was wondering if there will be any more new Top 40 stations in the near future. Thank you so much. Have you talked to your therapist? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I will today. Did they like respond? your initial source of trauma. Yes, they responded. I'm trying to... <gasps> sorry, I wish I thought of this earlier because I didn't even think we'd talk about this, but... Yeah, I feel like email chains like were a little different in 2004. Yes. Like, you, you don't thread it together as... Yeah, know. it may not come up the same way. Um, the first CD I remember ever owning was Weird Al Yankovic, Running oh. With Scissors, and then Lou Bega's Mamba Number no. 5. Love. Oh, my God. Yeah, those Lou are my Bega. two like first CDs I ever owned. And it was just you like, had Lou Bega's the album. album? Yeah, I know all the songs. There, there were more songs There was like, Yeah, it was a whole album. It's like the Bahamen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You oh, just my know God. The one Bahamen did have. Uh, <laughs> there was like another one, <laughs> right? Have, oh, the best year of our life. Whoa. Yes. Oh, my God. My God. Yeah, that was on the Shrek soundtrack. Yeah. I can like vividly remember out like the bewitched album yeah like i can just remember what they all look like i loved collecting cds i had like my cd cases yeah my um it was like i was in college and someone stole all of my cd cases out of my car and it was like the oh, most no. devastating thing that's ever happened in my entire life it's like, violating all my burnt cds i'm oh. like take the other ones but like all of those that like had meaning oh, the burned ones are deep oh my god it was traumatic oh Terrible. It's crazy. It was honestly, we're burn CD. I know. Oh, yeah. How well, did we so do fun. it? I can't. Re- like, was it, <laughs> now I'm like, trying to think. You would. You'd make a playlist. There was a software though, and then yeah. you would put yeah the tracks into it, and then you would click burn. Yeah. But remember, like, did you have a? It was a separate yes. CD port. You had yes. your yeah. CD port, and then you had the burn yeah. port underneath yeah. it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember. That's how it started. It was like you would put one CD in the top and one CD at the bottom. Put them both in, and then you transfer it from one to the other oh you could or do it on you, itunes yeah though. yeah, yeah. Well, that, like, eventually i think eventually thing, yeah because like itunes didn't really exist when you had like just physical cds yeah. yeah i remember when we first read about cd burners i was like at the playground we were like seven <laughs> years old and <laughs> reading npr I, <laughs> well no the fire literally remember like we my dad was there something and I, the first thing i said was oh my god we can each have our own backstreet boy cd now because I, I, my three younger brothers and we'd have to like share the Backstreet Boys CD with whoever's Walkman had it. And I remember being like, we can each have our own now. Were you we a BSB girly? Uh, I did not like NSYNC. Yeah, I definitely, definitely Backstreet Boys. Um, I was a Backstreet Boys fan originally, but then I slowly grew to realize that NSYNC Switch. was better. Like I realized NSYNC had more hits, like um, on an album mm-hmm. kind of a okay. thing. Oh, we're so, like indie girls. Yeah. yeah, we're like Backstreet Boys. I also thought like Backstreet Boys were for boys and NSYNC was for girls. Cause like <laughs> when you would like go to like the back to school shopping area, like the, the Backstreet Boys stuff would be like cool and the NSYNC would be like with hearts and like pink. And, oh, that's right. true. And they were that very heart funny, throbby. Yeah. And so I, I didn't want to like be girly. You know, be a little girly and like NSYNC. But now I, I kind of think NSYNC actually has way better songs than Backstreet Boys. I think so too. BSB was like maybe the original emo after country music <laughs> original I guess emo. Like, like pop emo they just i feel like had a lot more like slow deep cuts they did yes they, they did. were like a very like white boys to men kind of group yes. like yeah. they had this yes. like really good like vocal um synchronous Synchronicity. What's the word? Synchronicity. Synchronicity. Well, about even like them. the album, they're wearing. Like, they look like angels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like yeah. The, the, white... the millennium yeah. one. Oh we're yeah. Dress like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just know. changed to linen. <laughs> Did you guys know about their manager? There's a documentary about their manager. Oh yes. Yeah. How... Did Nicholas Caprio produce that? Oh maybe. Oh. I think he did. Oh, the the boy con. I think. Yeah, boy band remember. con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, I think wow. he produced that. Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah, they just basically, who was first? In, in sync or Backstreet Boys? Backstreet Boys. Backstreet. Backstreet. Yeah, so they signed with a manager and behind their back, he signed in sync. So basically made a competitor. And he just, the contract was atrocious. Yeah. He like made himself the fifth or sixth member of each um group so he got a huge payment and yeah. it just like was super unfair but it was a, it's a really good documentary uh, i was wild club. about just sugary pop music like Same. during that time aaron I mean, carter just, uh, aaron carter uh, mandy moore oh, um, oh my god mandy <laughs> candy oh yeah that song oh candy's the best um, we need to go to candy pop night <laughs> yeah oh yeah it's all day a, i think it's every all day is it every week i could um mm, i don't know tj actually just it wasn't, but I think I maybe he said they changed it to every week. I know. I think he said that too. 
I, 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 we've gone one time and I loved yeah, it. Yeah, we used to go like a lot. Actually. And I love it because they like will play like a movie on the screen too. Uh huh. Like bring in the background, on. like Bring It On was playing. I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you ever go to like uh, concerts to see these like people? Um, at all? Like I went to the All That concert that they had oh at this my state, god. and it was. 18s. Oh my god. Like a uh, jump five and then like oh my god. little Sammy and then little uh, Bow Wow. Yeah, like yes, yeah, so, like little Bow little Wow. The 18s were the first celebrity I ever saw with my own eyes. <laughs> I nearly fainted as a kid. Like I couldn't believe oh that they were god. right there. They were signing autographs, but I didn't get to like meet them because we had just walked in. Yeah. Man, I'll never forget that day looking right at them. The That's 18s so just crazy. did ABBA covers, right? Or was it only one ABBA no, cover? No, they did Upside Down. Bouncing. No, so they the did different ceiling. covers. But they, or did they have their own stuff? They did have their own stuff. Oh, okay. I just remember they covered uh, Dancing I Queen. I think they covered like other songs too. Oh, yeah, I think so. Probably. Like some old disco tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were Swedish. So I think they kind of got the nod from ABBA that uh, they couldn't do it. 18s yeah. and like S Club 7, <gasps> where I feel like same vibes. But the S Club 7 TV show... Oh, with oh, Howie? Oh, I kind of that. Tie a yellow ribbon yeah. around the old oak tree. <laughs> so good. <laughs> I loved S Club 7. I would literally jump, because like in the show, they would be like jumping on a trampoline. Oh, and I remember yeah. like my friends who had trampolines, we would like put the song on and like pretend, pretend we were S Club 7. I can name all, John, Joe, Bradley, <laughs> Tina, Rachel, <laughs> Hannah, and- Oh my God. Uh, How many people were in his band? Seven. So many. Oh, duh. Yeah, S Club 7. <laughs> Damn. And then Joe. And we got Joe. Oh, she, she got, got the, the flow. flow. Get, Get ready, ready, everybody, because here we go. What are these people doing now? <laughs> um, Having kids. Yeah. I don't know. I know Hannah was an Agent Cody Banks, too. Oh, all right. <laughs> but okay, uh, that's all I know. Oh, those were the days. Yeah. And then, but do you think you were raised, like, with an eclectic taste of music, though? Like, were your parents showing you, like, I don't know what yeah. they liked yeah my dad would always listen to like alternative radio so it'd be like oh, nice. guns and roses and like you know all of the like classic dad, dad rock yeah. Yeah. yeah classic rock yeah but then like we would listen to the radio where they were playing like today's hits so it was very and i loved it all like even now like i love all genres of music but then i also i didn't have any siblings growing up so i didn't have like older people telling me what to like but i did have cousins so then, I don't know, when I was probably in, like, fifth or sixth grade, they were now listening to emo music. Right. So then I got into that, like, heavy. That was, like, my genre. But I still liked everything. It was Paul. That was the other one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> For back Club home. 7, I think. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, it was, like, a yeah. missing one. But and I, so, like, when your dad, oh, like, though, was listening to, like, classic rock, mm -hmm. I've, I've thought about this recently, like, if you're in 1995 and your dad's listening to a song from 1965, 30 sure. years old, that's like us listening to music from 1992. I know. I it's know. really crazy. Which is like kind of insane that you think like, oh yeah, in the 90s you're listening to Frank Sinatra and but like. What's weird is I'm gonna be listening to the 1975 in front of my kid. The 1975, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a... But just like like the fact that you know My Chemical Romance is like theoretically classic I know. rock. If you're oh, gonna look at the same, right. like that uh, album came out in 2003. Yeah, they're on like their 20 year tour or whatever. Yeah, that's like Guns N' Roses and like all these other totally. bands that we grew up with thinking they're like old dad. But I feel like it's changed in culture where bands that were around when the internet was around are sort of still relevant. Yeah. Not like we would never yeah. go see a Guns N' Roses concert, but I no, feel they're like they're at Coachella. <laughs> Yeah, but like, like not, stuff like that. Gen it's, Z is not seeing Guns N' Roses, sure. but they will. Go, I feel like Gen Z might go to a My Chemical Romance concert. Totally, yeah. Because they're still like, they're like relevant in our age. Or... Yeah. yeah, they think that they're like new bands. <laughs> right, that's true too. Yeah, they're like, wait, they have all these other songs? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if the internet will keep a lot of that music alive. Because to us, when I was growing up, you know, Guns N' Roses, play, uh, bands like that, I was like, whatever, it's old. Yeah, it's, it's like so accessible music. to listen yeah. to music. Yes. Now. We can pull up any song right now. Like, yeah. I think people, there was such a shelf life to everything, like literally, right. where you would just be like, okay, well, I'm done with this. Let's move on to the next thing. Yeah. Now I feel like things you get your can... your Spotify e playlist, it's there forever. Yeah. You don't need to change CDs in your car. It's just everything is yeah. available all the oh time. God. To go back to what you were saying, though, um, it's like when... 
everyone heard that Portugal the Man song. Yes. And they were like, oh my God, this artist, like it's so new and cool, but they have like 14 albums. Yeah, that was like their eighth album. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, I had seen Portugal the Man like live many, many times. (laughs) Everyone's like, look at this cool new band. It's like they've literally been around forever. Yeah. Do you ever ever have that kind of like dark hipster side to you where you get really like angry that like if everyone's finally listening to something, you're like, I I was listening to that the whole time. I feel like I kind of felt that way with Paramore a little when they like blew the fuck up and kind of transitioned more like like still into you like that album was very like poppy and it's like go appreciate their early shit yeah because that's (laughs) the good stuff yeah yeah Yeah. it's like when they don't have the appreciation for it as like how they started as an artist right you know yeah i mean that but that's just how it happens like people you always have to have fans before you can totally yeah do you know what paramore means no doesn't it mean like hooker or something so isn't I, it like an anomaly or something i, I look I, I was having a conversation with someone we were talking about the word mistress how like guys have mistresses and what what would be if you're a woman who's like cheating on her husband with a guy what what is the term for that and i just googled it and it's a paramour oh, i wonder how that happened i know Which I I've, I've like i never thought to question what the band name is and i never yeah. knew what that term was and i've just discovered this like two nights ago fun fact that's a good name for a band paramour like, we yeah. didn't even question it it's we're really yeah. interesting we're... though because they're like very religious yeah so it's kind oh, of really? like oh like so re- they like they grew up in franklin tennessee which is like you know big red state but there like, are some bands very... that are like under under the radar christian rock like mute math is a band that's like under oh yeah mute math. um oh. under oath think, is christian. laney <laughs> laney yeah laney's christian if you listen to their album yeah. they're like they're one of the guys is like a big hill song member or whatever oh, like mosaic wow. or like one of them oh. If you listen, if you like see that and then you listen, it's then like, yeah, oh, the this is like pretty like, Christian rock. And I did everything for him because he sacrificed yes. for me. And you're like, yeah. oh, he's just literally talking about. There's a song about... called You. Uh, literally could also, it be more of a, like the Christian. Killers is Christian. Yeah, that's oh. another one I think too. Okay. Like really Christian. Wasn't like Evan, what's that band that you. Evanescence? Is that where, the... no, the, the Flyleaf or something? Flyleaf was really Christian. Yeah. Oh, no, the yeah. I can feel you all around I still love some good Christian music though. I mean, yeah. Spirit Hill. <laughs> oh, that one! <laughs> I love, I love that Hill song. For our God is, is an awesome, awesome God. <laughs> we would, uh, our yeah. There was this lady who would take care of us when we were after like school. We would go and like have like daycare, but at this family friend's house, they were hardcore Christians and would play us just like oh Christian <laughs> rock, like Stephen Curtis Chapman, all of these like almost now CDs, but Christian songs. Mm-hmm. And I still have them like stuck in my head, but like. I will go up and Google it and like try to find them. I don't know why I'm talking about this, but yeah, I had like a bit of a Christian rock phase too, for sure. Nice. Well, they're good songs. I mean, they're really catchy. All mm-hmm. those Hill song songs are pretty catchy. Do you guys listen to any. lyrics when you when you hear a song for the first time? Are you hearing like the words, the music? Do you hear them together? I feel like, like I hear lyrics mostly. That's really? what I like about a song is the lyrics. I feel like now for me, it's all kind of just like there, and then I have to go back and like listen. Like I'll listen to a song, and then I kind of just like whatever. But when I was younger, I would literally put the song on and read the words oh, right? yeah. and like memorize open them. up that cd yeah. cover yeah. and go through it all az lyrics it, oh yeah it depends, <laughs> it depends on the artist like some music or some bands i can hear and i know the words like that without having to read them i'll be honest 1975 no i'm idea. still really bad when listening to it oh, i'm I like don't i saying. don't know what he's <laughs> yeah, saying just sounds nice <laughs> but um but also even like rappers like lil wayne his stuff sticks with me really really mm. really well jay-z can't i can't recite anything anything from jay-z kanye gets in my head really really well just i don't know well like i'm saying some people will listen to like a song for the first time and they like can't sing it back to you but they'll know what the words were because they're only listening to the words and like the music is about the story and about what the artist is saying i don't have that like brain mm-hmm. i i i don't know what the lyrics are to, like unless i look it up but um you when you hear a song are you just like we want to know what the story is who yeah. they're talking I about think that's why i like taylor swift so much too is because her lyrics are so good but she, taylor swift <laughs> i don't know <laughs> I was like, did you not hear me the first time? <laughs> but she also came from country, and country is like that where they tell right. the story. So yes. it's like she, she came from country. Well, she was originally had a little twang. Well, yeah, but it, she was like a plant in the industry. Oh yeah, you're yeah. like, oh, we'll make this bitch a country artist. Oh, she didn't want to be a country artist. I don't know if she, it's not that she didn't want. I don't know. To. I think she that was just like her genre at the time. Is know. Taylor Swift your guys' number one all time? Yeah. I mean, I grew up listening to her, and yeah, she's it. There's no one. 
I mean, there's other people like Paramore. I grew up listening to. I feel like that's really. See, I wish I had someone who was like top Billboard artist that you were a fan of, who was like my number one, because I feel like that person's constantly entertaining you in a way yeah, there's I mean, yeah. so much discography yeah. to take in especially it's what she's so doing right different. now like every taylor swift al- album like none of them are the same yeah to me. like you get every genre you get country you get pop you get folk you get like <laughs> stadium rock exactly yeah. yeah like it's like you get all the genres are there for you whatever mood you're feeling you're like oh i'll put on speak now or Oh, I'll put on 1989 and like bop around the house at a little pop party. And people are like talking about it. She's constantly making stuff for you guys to discuss and talk about. Like yeah. it's still relevant. Well, and she's re-releasing all of her old records, oh, re-recording yeah. them. So that's even more exciting because it's like nostalgia. We get a new Taylor, or we get a Taylor Swift album from when I was in high school, and she's also releasing ten extra songs on it that she wrote at the time that she never released before. So oh, it's like that's cool. I'm getting new Taylor Swift from high school <laughs> or from cool. college or whatever. Yeah. So it's really. I mean, we're, I feel like we're really lucky to be big fans of hers because yes. we get to experience this. Like, who else gets to experience that with their favorite artist? Yeah, that would be so cool. If, I also like, think yeah. it's cool for her, too, because she's been around for so long. But because she's so versatile, like, she can get new fans all of the time. She got me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I used to always been like, eh, it's Taylor Swift. Yeah. Like, I know the songs, like, whoop de doo But after I watched, <laughs> after hey, I watched uh, was it Miss Americana? What uh-huh. was the yeah. name of it? I fell in love with yeah. just her. I, she earned so much respect yeah. from me. Like that girl is thinking about her music all the time, writing it, all of it. And yeah. um, I don't know. I just uh, now I, I really do enjoy having a Taylor Swift on. And I feel like a lot of dudes and I'm not going for dudes specifically, <laughs> but I think some people are a little bit of snobs when it comes to like their music taste where they just want to hate things because it's not for them. Yeah. Yeah. Hipsters. The worst. But like, just enjoy it. Like there's a, I don't know. I love seeing also the joy one song can bring so many people and it makes me enjoy it too. Like, I don't know. That's, I love that, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? You don't want to be a hater. There's a, there's a lot of haters out there. Hey, yeah. Who's gonna hate? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. She got a song, a song for everything. For everything. <laughs> like, I, can get to, I can get down with a lot of songs. It depends how many times I've heard the song though. I go yeah. a little nutty about. Like stuff that's overplayed, I'm like, switch it up. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. What was the first concert you ever went to? I think mine was like Kelly Clarkson or something. I think it was like the American Idol tour. Wow. I went with a friend. Mine was Kelly Clarkson and Clay yeah. Aiken. Really? <laughs> do you like remember this? Like, do you remember getting the ticket, getting I to the venue? Vaguely like, remember. I vaguely remember. Because I went with a friend. It wasn't like an imprint in your brain where you're like, oh my God, this no. is the first concert. Because I never went to like any, like I never went to Backstreet Boys. I never went to anything like that. But then as I was like probably starting in like seventh or eighth grade is when I was like really into emo stuff. So that's when I started being like a showgirl. Like I would go to concerts all of the time. And then until I got older, like I've been lucky enough to like go see Backstreet Boys or like people who have made like comebacks. Yeah. Cause I never got to see them when I was younger. God, one time not to rag on the Backstreet Boys, but one time they played like in central park summer stage, like before their recent comebacks, it was probably like five or six years ago when they were like not popping and they did a show in Central Park Summer Stage and it was like free. So you could just like walk up. But in there was a big poster that said like presented by Old Navy and like in between every song they were like, and make sure to just check out, go to your local Old Navy and like get these pants on. <laughs> oh, like in between oh every song they were like shouting God. out Old Navy and it was just like, oh, oh man. Oh my God, every yeah. time, like shut up. <laughs> I mean, I, all respect. That to, was your to, first? Totally. No, no, no. <laughs> no, uh, my first concert was like pretty nerdy. I went to go see these three guitar players like that did like a collaborative tour. The John Butler trio? No, it was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Joe Joe Satriani, John Petrucci, Joe and Ingve Malmsteen. People that no one's ever heard of. Like yeah. they're like guitar gods. And it was just like I was like 13 years old and I went to this concert. It was like these three guitar players I was a huge fan of. And right before the show, like one of the guitar players like popped out into the lobby to like meet his mom or something. Yeah. So they're not like celebrities, so they were just like regular guys. But I saw him and I like my whole body started sweating and I was like <laughs> Oh my god, he's a real person. And I Aww. saw the concert and I was like, okay, this is I'm playing guitar for the rest of my life. It was oh. really cool. Did you play guitar before you went? Or yes. was it okay? Cool. I've been playing guitar since I was like three years old. So I was just oh like god. big three. guitar nerd. Three. Three, <laughs> three or four. <laughs> Go on. Like three, <laughs> three. Maybe, maybe like four or five. I was like really young when we first started taking guitar three. lessons. Three. I think it was like I think it was like four or five years old we started taking guitar lessons. I was doing karate when I was like three or four. My parents put us into <laughs> I feel like karate's like different though, because you just have to use your little legs. Yeah. And arms. But your fingers are so tiny. 
tiny. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I feel like little kids are way more like you see like yeah. when you see an eight year old kid who's ridiculously good at guitar. I think they learn easier. True. They've been playing for like a few years. You don't get that in a year. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, like TJ started skiing when he was like three. So yeah, yeah. he can do anything. See. Yeah. You can do anything your little teeny infant brain <laughs> sets its mind to. My Maybe. first concert was uh, Britney Spears' Oops, I Did It Again. <gasps> That's iconic. Yeah. Wow. Oops, I Did It wow. Again. Who'd you go with? Uh, me and my friend John and Christopher and, uh, so and, and Addison. Just... Uh, what? You were just like, she's hot. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I used to have like the poster of Britney Spears. <laughs> yeah. Like when you folded G14. out everything, oh, yeah. you could G14. like pin it on your wall. Yeah, had that. And uh, oh, we had like the Oops, I Did It Again glow sticks and stuff. And she came down and like <laughs> oh, this orb. God. And then there were all these lockers and she would like. Was it like an awakening for you, like spiritually, where you're like, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I remember at the end, we were like. Like the show ended and she didn't play Oops, I Did It Again. We were like, no, 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 no. And all of a sudden it was like, <laughs> and it was like, it was like the some encore. video of her and she goes, Oops, I Did It Again. And we're like, oh my God. God. Wow, so you really like fell for the encore. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I really believed it as a kid. I'm like, she forgot. <laughs> she forgot. I love the dancing that Britney did and also Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. I don't know what kind of dancing it's called. Like synchronized dancing? Yeah, I just think it's so fun. Like, like I love when people Darren's do it. Dance like Mackenzie Stith one time posted a <laughs> story of her doing um, Oops, I think it was Baby One More Time or something and it was like the exact karaoke and I'm just like, that's so cool. I just wow. love yeah. it. Dancing's so hard. Did you ever have yeah. Darren's dance? Dance grooves. Oh, just just that. That. Actually, oh someone, I'm so I sorry. I think someone sent it, uh, it to us oh, like yeah, a few years did. ago. Is that? I forget what it was. Was that like pop music? Yeah, he, he didn't he like teach them the dances i think he or... claims i okay. don't know if he was actually the guy but he would like that was the infomercial like i did all the choreography yeah. for britney spears and backstreet boys and nsync and then he would teach you how to do the dances from, from the music the... videos i got yeah. darren's wow. dance grooves on vhs for christmas and it made me like doubt santa claus because i was like because <laughs> remember darren's dance grooves you could only buy it if you called the number to like, yeah. get yeah. it so i was like so santa Called the number <laughs> to get me Darren's dance grooves. Like I was like, like oh, there's no way Santa would do that for me. <laughs> like, was Cindy like, no, 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 like they're friends. Oh, I, I, I didn't, I didn't even yourself. say it out loud. That I think that that was so a moment I wanted funny. to be like, thank you. Well, I couldn't that's like believe it. How the now CDs were too. You had to like call yep. and order them. Yeah, but then they started no. selling them like in stores. I, I bought yeah. now two. Uh, in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> Just for those who don't know, back before oh, yeah. Spotify and all that, there was a oh every they still like, make them commercials for, sure. for it was called Now That's What I Call Music. And it was a compilation of like 30 of whatever the hit songs of the day were. And if you wanted to just get like your favorite songs, you'd have to call a number, write a check, mail the check, and then they would mail you the CD. But I bought the first one at Kmart. Oh, you bought it in a oh. store? Mm -hmm. Oh, so maybe, maybe there was... were two different ways. Yeah, because yeah, it definitely yeah. had it. It was like every other infomercial. Did you ever yeah. listen to the Kids Bop CDs? No. no, I think we're a little too old. For God, the just it's still, you did no, but I was I'm gonna just say like, you're like, older than we no, are. I just remember seeing the commercials and oh, I'm like, yeah. why would anybody want to hear like random kids that they hired from a casting thing to like sing kids, my I guess. my no, favorite songs? I've said this also like years prior. It's like as a parent, like yeah. I'd be like, listen to the real shit, right? Yeah, like I don't get used to the real world yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Music. I don't want you listening to children. <laughs> Is it because it's cleaner? They yeah. do clean it up, but also I think it's just like a way to sell something. It's like, oh, it's just like kids singing it and yeah, it's kids' like voices. Kid's voice. I wonder if there are any kids who are out there who grew up listening to Kids Bop and then now the... oh, like don't like when they hear the non-Kids Bop version because it's like... <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Because like, yeah. just like there's into... certain rap songs you only know the clean version of, yeah. like better, like uh, To the Window, To the Wall. Like I know that, yeah. the yeah, clean, yeah. or the or 50 like... Cent in the club, the clean version of that I know really well. Yeah. But I guess for them are they like it's probably because we were listening uh, to the radio and they were only playing clean versions that's yeah. probably why we know that yeah that's that's why yeah. but i wonder if their brain i know like, it, when they hear it, it's like that's not like compute nails on a chalkboard but it's, it's also like just kids singing so it's like there's oh also God. like they still do kids bop like today and they yeah. came out with one well, they for did the WAP. lizzo one what's they the lizzo didn't do one like a, it was like oh, yeah. it was like uh like viral on tiktok in a minute i'm gonna need a Something, remember, something. They also yeah. do one for WAP, and it's like, minute, I think it's like wet cookie. and mushy or something. They're oh, talking yeah, about like mashed and, potatoes. Yeah. Oh my and God. it's like so, wet and mushy, and you're like, I just don't maybe know they, they did don't. not do WAP on <laughs> they did, yeah. They did, they did. And I think it's wet and mushy, and it's like about like uh, mashed, potato. mashed potatoes. 
<laughs> no, they didn't. Dude, I'm not making this up. I don't know if that's the exact thing, but they did a WAP. I saw like a clip of it and I was just like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Just skip that one song. Who is in the damn studio? Yeah. Like, <laughs> let's do <laughs> wet ass pussy. I would love to be a writer Kids on Bop Kids Bop, Bop though. That it probably, must be like, so funny. Or do you think those guys are just like miserable, like grizzled guys who used to be in the music biz and just couldn't cut it and now they're just like, like I don't know. Kids I feel Bop. like they have to be like silly. Into it, yeah. Because I feel like they probably don't I feel like they probably have writers for it who are like, ha ha. And then they have the people like producing it. Yeah. Who are like, those are the ones who are like, I want to kill myself. <laughs> Where do they get the kids? They uh, get casting calls. Yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Those are stage moms and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've actually seen <laughs> some TikToks of people who've been like, where kids bop kids where are you at now and people will like show uh. where they are and everyone's like you were my like dream like kid when i was oh a my kid God, i couldn't i couldn't tell you a single thing about the kids on kids bop yeah well because we didn't grow up with them yeah no i think they were they were still selling them during when we Dude, were growing we up would, like Let's i see. bet kids bop came in around 2003 or four you but, yeah, and if you so, were listening to, I was listening to like we're in middle <laughs> school yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it originated in 2001 Kids Bop? Yeah. Oh, so it was after 9 11. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, yes. It really. The country just, needed it. Yeah, it brought us all back together. <laughs> and like they do tours, right? Like Kids Bop Tour, I think, yeah, too. I think oh, so. yeah. That makes sense to like, as a parent, you want to take your kid and they can just see all of their favorite songs that they listen to under. It's like going to a festival for a kid. Yeah, just like, literally bring Coachella. them to Warp Tour. Like, <laughs> are, they, are they in a tour bus or they got a jet? Is there a Kids Bop jet? <laughs> <laughs> They're flying around it, just like got soda machines and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just doing, doing lines of pixie dust. Like. <laughs> That's really living a rock funny. star life as a kid. Um, yeah, they definitely, definitely had to have done that. Do you guys like musicals? Yes. Like movies or not really? Oh, it depends. I, I think we're be... sitting on the right side for this because musical theater. Oh my god, love it. I, me too. Oh, I yeah. would go to all of my cousins. They would like when I was younger. They were in the theater programs at their <laughs> high schools, and I would go to like all of the it shows. Was such a treat. Yeah. It was such Did a you treat. guys have field trips where you would go see like your local high school do a musical and stuff? Well, we lived close to New York, so we would go oh. to like broad. Like oh, I remember, like, like, I hated it. Oh, yeah. Just like because you, they would they would get like you would literally sit in the absolute back row of every theater. Yeah. Because like a school trip, and we but we like I went I've been to Broadway and seen like Broadway what? shows. Yeah, when I was like a little kid, I think that's so cool. You all do field trips in Manhattan. Yeah. Like. <laughs> And like Washington D.C. and like I did Philadelphia. a field trip in Manhattan. Yeah, damn. Yeah, you know, that was drive cool. out there like in a yeah, day. Yeah, we take a, it, a Peter Pan bus. It takes like three and a half hours. Or Peter we, Pan bus. Yeah, like one of those like Greyhound buses. Yeah, you, yeah, oh, it's like a public that. transit bus. Like yeah. yeah, we had. I think we saw like the Twin Towers when they were still up. Oh, like, I was we, like <laughs> before. Damn. Yeah, we took like yeah, a field yeah. trip there. Yeah. See the Empire State Building? We're right there. It's like an hour away. You know, we it's... like our when we went, it was like during the Gossip Girl era, and we were like, let's find the steps. <laughs> <laughs> did you find the steps? We did. Oh. I just never I them. just can't get through like you know, like you're watching a movie of two people talking and then they just go, and oh. then I'm gonna start singing. Why are you singing? It's it doesn't I don't it's get a musical. It. Yeah. I don't get it. So there's something so, in my brain that doesn't click. Okay, there's something though that is now like happening in the world where they just start doing that in like random shows that aren't musicals like what they'll have a I mean? random musical episode yes, like which scrubs I did hate. that yeah. yeah i hate that don't do that <laughs> we were watching this show uh, oh my god what was it called it was one with joseph gordon levitt it's like new apple plus show and i was like oh my god i forget what it was called but it was like really good and then all of the sudden we were probably like three episodes in and then one episode just turned into a musical episode and i was like oh, nope i'm done the worst i don't weird. like that but i love musicals like movies and theater just yeah like high school musical <laughs> yeah it's catchy because it's like dialogue and a song yeah. and it's like aggressively telling a story to it I so guess, i guess yeah i we talked about this i would say i don't like musicals but then i i loved rent i liked tick tick boom oh, yeah. i loved um did you see hairspray or was that one i was like watch yeah that? i haven't seen that um what were the other ones like the uh, Elton John one. Shrek, Shrek, I guess that is, yeah. Is Shrek, <laughs> Shrek is, oh, Shrek is now a musical, but the oh, movie's really? not a musical. Uh, no, but like at the end when they do like the musical number. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they, I one time saw they made American Psycho into a Broadway musical. American Idiot! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen, uh, what's that kid no, on Kyle Gordon? Gordon. Kyle Gordon. Yeah, he's the best. Though. One, 21 <laughs> guns! <laughs> And my guitar is my gun. <laughs> it's like, I've never wait, my guitar is my that. gun and my words are my bullets. 
Um, so funny. American Psycho the musical was like might have been one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. Oh, really? it, 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 it was only open for like two months. Like it wasn't. I get what they were trying to do. They tried to turn it into like a campy like musical. And it was like cool to see it on Broadway. But it was just not like it's just it was just so weird. I don't know. I really wanted to see Mean Girls on Broadway. Oh, oh me too. I cool. heard it was good. Yeah, I love too. that girl who's in um, Sex Life of College Girls. Oh, yeah. She mm-hmm. played like Regina George in mm-hmm. it. Oh. What's her name? Wait, which girl? She's the like blonde one? the blonde, yeah, the one. blonde one. She, I remember seeing her what on TikTok. She's like, this is like my average day of when I go oh to like um, a rehearsal and she's like singing. I was like, what? <laughs> she's like really it. young. I think she's like 21. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah. Oh, let's go to a play. I would love to. I really a want to see. <laughs> uh, well, I really want to see To Kill a Mockingbird, the Aaron Sorkin version, but that's not a musical. Is it out? Um, or it's in Broadway. It's in but New York. I think they're touring it. Like it's going to mm-hmm. come to L.A. So we should yeah. go to more theater, guys. I, I went with love- Jason last night to a the stand up show, the one man show, Mike Birbiglia and we, Mike Birbiglia, and he was like, "We should do more cultural things like this." And I was like, "It is. <laughs> it, it really is nice to like get dressed up. You go to the theater. You yeah. like mix and mingle with people. It's like kind yeah. of a fun vibe." A little better than going to like a club and just blacking out and oh, then yeah yeah Ugh, i love musicals we should do like a winter trip oh and then yeah. go to broadway oh yeah and just see everything winter in new york <laughs> i heard hades town is good the one i want to see actually is the mormon one Book oh, of mormon. The, the mormon. oh that one oh. That, i feel like i would my like, name is elder because it's like comedy like i feel like i could do comedy musical like yeah. bo burnham stuff is great oh um, yeah but i don't know That's... i also want to see matilda oh i didn't know one. I didn't know that either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll just do a whole we week of Broadway. Oh my god, that would be so much. Man, there was going to be a weekend. Matt and I went to Vegas and saw every magic show that they had in Vegas. Oh, oh god. yeah, but then we saw one magic show. No, but then we were like, we should come oh. back and do every show. The yeah. But then the pandemic not... happened because then we didn't go. But that's still another what bucket list thing. What did you see? Uh, Penn and Teller. Teller. Okay. Oh yeah, I have the video too, Matt. Probably and... the best one. I did a little bit of acid too when I went and saw it. <laughs> And uh, I was like, yeah, I was like tripping out. It was insane, some of the tricks. And I remember, though, the weirdest part of it was when he looked at the audience and went and he looked. I swore he looked right at me and he said, happy birthday. Do you remember <laughs> that? It was your birthday. Yeah. It was my birthday. <laughs> yeah. And you and me both oh looked God, at each knew? other like, what? Yeah, it was really bizarre. <gasps> oh, my yeah. God. Went, happy uh, birthday. And, then you, okay. and I got to go on the stage and they made an elephant disappear or appear i can't even I can't remember. remember but then you met him afterwards too and you took a picture of his hands mm-hmm. that was cool what were you gonna say oh we saw david copperfield was that good no no it was <laughs> we, I, I also was saw shocked. chris angel not good yeah i am a mind freak I, yeah we need I to do a magic episode we'll do, uh, oh. would you be into that yeah i've been to the magic castle quite a few times I just don't know what, like, what will we talk about? Oh, man, I can gab for days about magic. I think we'll we can have it. a magician just come in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess I just don't know, like, subjects about magic. Um, but... Have you guys ever taken, like, music lessons to learn <laughs> yeah. how to play instruments? What What have you played? Or can I... you still play? Absolutely not. Okay. I did guitar. Okay. I did <laughs> piano. And I think that was it. Like private lessons or like in school? Like... In school, we had a guitar class, which was like an elective, but I elected to take it because I wanted to learn. And also my cousins uh, were learning. And then it was at a point in time where they like lived with us for a little bit. So then I like became really interested and then I wanted to take the class. Um, but then I didn't pursue it any further. It really hurt my fingers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have like weak hands. Playing it Atari. It really hurt my you hands. You just you're just, like, yeah. get used to it. Yeah, you're pressing against like metal. And I then... feel like unless you're doing it all the time and your fingers like get the calloused part, then yeah. it just wasn't worth it for yeah. me. Um, but then I took piano lessons outside. My neighbor like three doors up she taught piano like had like two grand pianos in her home like was a legit teacher and then when i had to do the um recital that is when i decided i no longer wanted to do it did you not do the recital no i did it i did it but then i I just like hate public being the center of attention in public like (laughs) public speaking (laughs) you know i'm literally playing like the most basic songs it's like bluebird bluebird like it's traumatizing to me because i'm i remember it specifically because it's like (laughs) what if i fuck up then everyone will hear and then i never did any instrument that was your last time playing music was uh, at the recital probably and wow. then of course you know the recorder <laughs> oh, I, mean, I can obvious. still do mary had a little lamb on a recorder yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. a real instrument a yes. recorder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yes, just it's a, a real <laughs> instrument well okay not i just this... thought it was like a toy well I this guess. isn't the conspiracy episode but <laughs> there is a conspiracy theory about the recorder and which is like just that plastic it's almost like a uh 
clarinet, but it's just plastic and it sounds horrific no matter what. <laughs> and the conspiracy is that like the government put a recorder on the curriculum to make kids not like playing music because of how bad recorders sound, it <gasps> turns kids off from playing other oh instruments. God. What? And, it's, and it allows them to like cut the music programs and not spend as much money. <laughs> oh my God. I, I think there's research about this. Like the recorder Damn. is like, there's I no- I can't believe it, it's it, awful. <laughs> it never sounds good. It's never used in any professional recordings. It's not a, it's not a real like instrument. It's but that's, cheap. It is cheap, but it sounds terrible. And it's also like, you know, you're, you're playing it and you're six years old and your mom's like, will you quit it? Just stop playing. And it like makes people not want to play music. That's my little conspiracy mm. about that. But I did also have a phase um, where I became really obsessed with, what's the shaky thing called? Tambourine. Maraca? Tambourines? Oh, uh, Is tambour egg tambourine? Shaker? Is that yeah, the one? Tambourine. Is that right? You can, like, it's like a, yeah. a little drum. With, yeah. Okay, yeah, tambourine. tambourine. Yeah. So there was a point in time where I became obsessed with the tambourine <laughs> and in my hometown, we would always go to this bar and there would be a band there playing live music and then one day i was really drunk and i picked up the tambourine <laughs> and started like playing it with the band and then my friends literally left me there i was like yoko play. ono just like <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah no i was like very obsessed with it i think it's just like you know so they were gone and you're just up there with the band yeah playing the no i would get like drunk and be very serious about it because my guy <laughs> friends like one of them played the drums and so he had like a drum set at his house he had a tambourine and we would always like jam when we were drunk at his house and i would always be the tambourine player i was like this sounds so good but then i'd see a video and be like what <laughs> this is literally nails on a chalkboard i've always wondered if you woke up and you were suddenly whatever favorite artist you have and you had to go out and perform like, like you woke up in your discography in. do you know oh, well best. enough taylor to where swift. you could entertain the audience definitely taylor swift okay taylor swift i don't know yeah, yeah. no i will not taylor swift mine's me, actually but... probably paramore i would say you could just be in the band and know all the parts and yeah yeah definitely yeah. Oh yeah, uh, mine would be uh, probably Vampire yeah, Weekend, like, but some songs I'd be like, I don't know, we're not doing that one tonight. Yeah, but they don't play every single song. You can pick thirteen or whatever for the set list. Yeah, so then, yeah. I think yeah, I could hang that for you. Who would it be? Mars uh, Volta. I mean, well, as like I, since I play music, I feel like I could do it for a lot of bands. But yeah, Mars Volta, The White Stripes, Red Hot Chili Peppers, like so many bands I could just join. Red Hot Chili Pepper. I had a Red Hot Chili Peppers face. I just saw them. only because I liked a guy, and I was like, oh, and he I liked the Chili Peppers. What? You saying you're like the guy who liked the Chili Peppers, yeah. and then it's not the best where you like have a crush on someone, and then they like like an artist, and then you end up like that... liking it, but then you end up really liking My it. My embarrassing one was <laughs> the guy I liked. This is probably like seventh or eighth grade in his AIM profile. It was like Matchbox Twenty, like sixteen days, and like every day it would be a countdown till he was going to the concert, and then I was like. Oh, I like Matchbox 22, but then I started listening to them, and then I actually really liked the oh, music. Oh, yeah, Rob Thomas, great voice. So it's good. I never realized that's him singing on You're So Smooth by what? Santana. Yeah. I thought that was Santana singing. No, no. Santana's a guitar player. Uh, correct, but yeah. I was like, the one time he sang, it was really good. It was really I, good. You told me that. You go, yeah, Rob Thomas. And I go, that's oh, you not... just found this out? <laughs> Dude, less than a year ago. <laughs> the whole time, I thought it was just... Doesn't that it was... say, like, Santana featuring Rob yeah, Thomas? Yeah, it does, it does. On the music video. I that... know, but remember that album cover for yeah, it? It was like that yeah, red, yeah, yeah, yeah. psychedelic-looking yeah. thing, and it was just Santana, and that's... And also the other song, Maria, Maria, boom, ba ba boom, boom, ba 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 They just sampled it. Maria, Maria. Sing the song that was such a story. Just Singing like the ocean, <laughs> under, under the moon. moon. I hate it. So was that when, we were like at a Michaels or something, and you were like, "Oh, Santana," and I was like, "Yeah, Rob Tom." I think that's, that's what it was. Where it was. We were yeah. at a Michaels. <laughs> Michael. He was buying his Christmas village. And like, this year's Christmas village. <laughs> and I was village. like, "What? <laughs> wow. Rob Thomas? It changed." It, yeah, and I know Rob Thomas's like stuff pretty well. Yeah, his yeah. voice I is really you were gonna specific. say you know him, and I was like, <laughs> yeah. "When are we going? When are we hanging?" <laughs> Do you know who Chris Fleming is, the, the comedian? No. Wait, yeah, I think He kind of has, like, the curly hair, and he wears those glasses. Fleming. I don't know. It sounds familiar. Uh, apparently, Rob Thomas was at a concert. He's like, you know, me and uh, Carlos, we, uh, you know, we talk on the phone, like, every every night. And Chris Fleming was like, <laughs> every night? <laughs> I highly doubt, Rob, yeah. that you're talking to Santan on the phone. Every night. <laughs> There's a funny, like, rant he has about that. <laughs> every night. Every night. Oh, but, um... In the movies episode, we talked about what our Vecna movie would be, but I feel like now it's a little more, you know, on the nose. What would your Vecna song be? Ooh. 
This is sorry. Remind me again what this means. So basically, it would be a song that you can like play on loop forever and ever and ever and like not really get sick of it. Oh, okay. So one that would pull you out of a dark place. Yeah. That would pull you out of a dark place, but also be able to listen to you over and over again. Yeah, like hers was running up that hill. Like Kate Bush. Hmm. Because she. Do you she, want a song that's like thirty minutes long so that way it's like it doesn't. <laughs> Well, that was well, my thing. Well, so, my, yeah, no, mine was yeah. when I was logically thinking about it. I was like, I know it'll be Robbers by the 1975. Like, whenever oh, like yeah. I hear those like chords and it oh, hit, oh, like oh. I really get it. But then, <laughs> then I was like, but the 10 minute version of All Too Well is also 10 minutes, so I wouldn't have to listen to it as, as many, many times. times yeah. So then maybe yeah. I wouldn't get as sick it has of it. Phases in the song. Yeah. Oh, yeah. good point. So I was like, it's got to be between those two. That or Jesus of Suburbia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, by my Green, Green Day. Day. <laughs> is that the one that starts with the. <laughs> it's like, I'm Nothing the son of Asian love. Oh, bam, 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 but then it's literally like six songs in one song. I don't know. Or Constantine by something I mean, that one too. 11 minutes. Constantine by something corporate. Yeah, I only know Hurricane. It's so long. We say, See, Shake down, you make me break. For, for goodness, goodness sake, sake, I think I'm on the edge. <laughs> Mike, what would your yeah? What would well, your... I'm just trying to think if I would want like a 30 minute like classical piece, like something from Vivaldi like, or something that you can just if you have oh, to listen you to wouldn't something... even know it started over again. Is, is that you have to know when it starts over? No, I don't. No, I'm just saying like with yeah. something like that. I think it. Well, to me, it just like all sounds the same. So it'd just be like you're listening to like a bunch Elevator of different music. Songs. Or I'm thinking yeah. of like Seven Nation Army, like bum 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 oh, bum. That was bum, the first bum. song I learned how to play on guitar. It's a great song. I learned how to play the, that on the, the bass. Ding, ding, me too. Yeah. yeah, that was the guitar my cousin had. But that's like my a song. cousin taught me how to play it on. And his you bass. plugged it into the amp. Yeah. Same. <laughs> but it, you know, I feel like if I heard that, that would make me like. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I think that's a good one. You know, I'd be like, oh, I know this song. Like, and, that's so recognizable. And I like that song, too, because, like, if you were actually with Vecna, I feel like it's a really, like, yeah, I'm going to fuck this Ooh, shit right, up. Right, right. You know? It'd be kind of the opposite, yeah. Mine would be Graceland by Paul Simon. <laughs> oh. The uh, your shower song. I'm going to Graceland. Graceland, Memphis, <laughs> Tennessee. If you ever, come, if you ever going... walk into Matt's house and you hear Graceland by Paul Simon, 100% of the time, he's in the shower. Yeah. Like, Every showering time... or? Yeah, showering. Just showering yeah, okay, just okay. singing. Like, I love that song. Like, it's like his, like he just has the uh, what's the little device you have in your bathroom? Oh, Google, Google Home. Home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, play it's Graceland like, by Paul Simon. <laughs> that guy's such a good artist. Yeah, what's the Tiny story Tim. about him? Tiny Tim? He was just like a crazy person. He would just like play the ukulele and had this crazy voice, but like, and I think people thought he was a joke, but he took himself really seriously and he like made a lot of hits. And then I think he, something happened where he just like got really like fucked up or oh, something no. and then he became like a crazy like jesus person and would like became like a church guy and was just really weird and didn't make what's wrong anymore. with that i'm just he just <laughs> went from being like a musician to being like this like weird preacher on like C there's like one video of him on cnn like yelling about the devil and it's just like oh, oh my god. god yeah i don't know but he, that's oh, in the first sad. episode of spongebob oh i am so happy you know happy go lucky me you know that when he's serving out all the no. The I very know. first episode of SpongeBob. I thought the first episode like of SpongeBob <laughs> is the bubble stand. No, it's the one where he's serving out all the all the Krabby Patties, oh. and it's Tiny Tim. Yeah, wow. a tiny man. Tiny Tim. Yeah, classic. That was like a, a rule in like King's Cup. What? Like take off your Tiny Tim. <laughs> Isn't Tiny Tim also from A Christmas Carol? God bless everyone. <laughs> He comes in. God bless. Tiny Tim, he's like the kid who's a crippled kid during Christmas. I don't remember. And like Scrooge finally sees like the miracle of God, God bless us. I don't everyone. know the story of Tiny Tim. I always thought that kid was Tiny Tim for some reason. Do you have a uh, best concert that you've ever seen that you're just like, that was the best mm. live thing I've ever seen in my life? Uh, okay, Taylor Swift, her shows are always so good. But I remember we went to a Lady Gaga show. Yeah, mm. that's And true. it was in insane we went like for work like we weren't even going to enjoy her music even though like i do like lady yeah. gaga's music we but probably i literally was like it. this is fucking insane yeah like she puts on a crazy i show. saw the yeah. monster ball that oh, tour oh my god and she played yeah the the piano with one foot and it was a, <laughs> yeah a, a, a plucking a guitar with the other one it was like <laughs> singing at the same <laughs> yeah, time like, i was like crazy. what is happening no yeah like when we she was literally playing the piano like floating through air like i was like this is the most <laughs> insane thing i've ever seen in my yeah. life like it was just so produced like it was like her own like musical almost wow. like it was just like so good and taylor does the same thing like the production's just wild that it's like a a show in itself yeah it's like a music video for every yeah. song it's oh really cool. each so every they're just like it's just yeah it's a con you can watch no. it with your like without even hearing the sound yes. and it's still crazy yeah if to watch. you watch yeah taylor she has a 
concert yeah right concert film yeah reputation tour is on netflix if you're like bored one day just like start it for like 10 minutes and just Dude, watch it's it's so it's good crazy i feel like i showed you or i turned it on oh, once yeah, i was yeah. like you need to watch this because <laughs> like, i've always been like in i love that opening night. song or bad reputation yeah. it's like yeah. and you're like you gotta see it in person yeah or, on the TV. It's really wild. She like Chills. comes up. Doom, doom, doom. Yeah. And then she's like. <laughs> doom, doom. It's really so good. good. Do you have a, a concert? Oh, uh, my favorite Matt? concert. Oh, that's a good question. Honestly, it was probably Vampire Weekend at the Hollywood Bowl in October of 2019. Mm. Loved it. Loved it. Nice. I just knew every single song. Was Rostam in the band at that time or he was out? Uh, no, he was not in the band. Mm. No. But, man, that, that concert hit. Fun fact about Matt and I with Vampire Weekend, we've talked about this on our podcast before, but in like 2016 or 2017, before Matt and I knew each, maybe it was 2015 actually, um, I was at South by Southwest, Matt was at South by Southwest, and Vampire Weekend played a show, and Matt and I were both at that show, but we hadn't met each other yet. Yeah. And we discovered oh years later. No, we realized yeah. that over we conversation. At he was the like, same oh, show. I saw them at, at, at Stubbs during South by. I was like, I was there. Yeah. I was there at that show. That also happened with me and TJ. Oh, yes. What My show is it? My now husband, Taking Back Sunday. Mm. We So we did not know each other. We met in Los Angeles, but he went to Berkeley, actually, in Boston, the music school, which is relevant to this episode. <laughs> um, and I just grew up in Massachusetts. And so I was, I don't even remember how old, but I went to the show at the Blue, uh, House of Blues in Boston. And then I remember I was like, uh, taking back sunday is like one of my favorite emo bands and it just like somehow got brought up and he was like wait what year and then i like said the year and he was like i was literally at that concert that is wow. funny That's and married. Wild. <laughs> have you ever looked up a youtube video of a certain show that you were at like a smaller one and oh. see if you can see yourself oh. in someone's video ew that's so Dude, creepy it's I, wild. Do it I was looking up like when i love childish gambino donald glover on his like first shows in like 2010 <laughs> at like emos in austin and i'm like looking at people's like just crappy iphone I don't know. Like I yeah, 3G yeah. videos with like 70 and I can views. see myself <laughs> yeah. just like jamming like in the background and it's that's wild. Hilarious. Wait, that's so cool. Yeah, it's a fun little thing oh, to yeah, do. Just to see yourself definitely do that now. I feel like the small shows I went to, I always went to the format was like one of my oh, favorite yeah. bands and they always played like really small shows. It's like Nate Roos from Fun. Yeah. Um, but they always played really small places. Yeah. I bet I could maybe find my I was like a groupie for the format were you ever on like them. internet forums for an artist that you liked and like would play make like <laughs> like internet <laughs> you were not you were on a play in yeah. forum no dead ass guys it she's was like, like I, I had some weird thing where i got obsessed with things uh for like a probably like a solid the radio year. station yeah for a solid year i was on this forum and like i knew people on it like we all knew each other because we were posting all the time on it <laughs> did you ever like meet any of them in person no that was a i was too young and it was also a time where it's like internet's bad like but you have name. like friends that you remember, like username, like oh, there's like a flower boy one two nine. Did you share it real talking about his lyrics, or like, did you see this photo of Clay? Yeah, Aiken? I'd be like, oh my god, he just played Lollapalooza or whatever, and Clay Aiken would... played Lollapalooza. I think so. I remember. <laughs> what up, Lala? And yeah. now he's like running for governor. Yeah, okay, is he a congressman? Or... I think yeah. he's trying to be. Yeah. So you were, but you were like posting every day and like reading and like that was a community you were in. Yeah. Like, people would write, like, fanfics, like, Clay and fanfics, so I'd read those, and I'd be like, oh my god, these are cr I mean, they were, like, super sexual, but it was just, like, interesting. Yeah, the, the, the fanfic is like, what if Clay was invisible? invisible. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, what, what if? What a creepy song. <laughs> I know, it is. I was invisible, you in the room. I would just watch you. Yeah, in but, like, room. I feel like that makes great fanfic. Yeah. Clay Aiken was invisible, yeah. and I caught him. That's really funny. Like, but off camera, just because I don't know if it's still your password, but it was, like, literally her password to log into. Oh, yeah, like, Kellen Clay. Like, I won't put this in, because I still use it for... Actually, I don't think I use it for anything anymore, but... Well, that's not yet. Like, Kelly Clarkson. Because I was like, that's my first concert. Like, I'll remember this. I've had that wow. password. So, yeah. Did yeah. you ever watch American Idol? Uh, Yeah, I watched the one, like, the one, I think it was the season where, like, Chris Daughtry, Taylor Hicks, like... All the, Taylor like, Hicks, oh my god! Taylor yeah. Hicks won though, yes, right? Yes, but that was I think I watched that one year, and that was it. The auditions I, were the best, though. I would always watch the auditions. Me too. They were Where's what's so Kelly bad. Pickler up to? Pick Pickler. Oh she's Pickler. I think she does like Broadway Pickler. now. She was so cute. Oh, you're right. Yeah. I think yes. she does Broadway. Yes. Oh, cool. Yeah, or she was on like a CW show, I think too. Oh, are you thinking of Catherine McPhee? That's no. what I'm thinking of. Oh, Catherine McPhee is on Broadway, and she's married to David Foster, who is a right. musician. Oh. He like produced something and then that's how they met and now they're together and he's like 70 and she's like 
36 or something. Catherine oh. McPhee. Yeah, that whatever that season was, that was the one that I watched. I thought Catherine that was really cool. McPhee. Yeah. I don't like well, when... Kelly Pickler. She was on the same season, no? Yeah, but like I feel like she was doing something. I thought like she that was too. on Clay Aiken's season, but maybe not. Oh my god, she Pick was so Pickler. cute. Also, who's the guy who sings for Queen now? He was on American oh, Adam, Adam Lambert. Yeah. Adam oh Lambert. yeah. Man, he can sing. Yeah. yeah. But he was also touring like wicked before he like auditioned for yeah. American Idol. I think yeah. he was a oh, little really? I think he was a little too professional oh. before they like should be on American Idol. I think if you're already a paid professional singer you shouldn't be auditioning for american it's crazy i mean with social media it feels like those shows are almost irrelevant now like you're better off posting 30 tiktoks a day of you singing than yeah you're like american oh, totally. idol. Like, but it's so can crazy you name that, who won uh, american idol three years no. ago no the fact that it's still a show it's just so crazy though because so many people still consume it yeah. yeah my parents watch it i think yeah. like they watch all those the voice and everything and, and their their contracts are so bad if yeah you win. Oh, yeah you don't yeah. want to win because then no. you're locked in yeah oh, she but was on dancing with the stars Kelly Pickler? Yeah. Do you remember that song Red High Heels that she had? Oh my god, it's so we gotta listen to it in the car. I love that song. She was like my country queen. I loved her. Who's the second guy who won? Um Ruben Ruben Sutter. Sutter. Yeah, he did Sorry oh. for 2004. <laughs> Dude. And this is my sorry for. We should listen to that one too. We should pull up an American Idol early 2000 playlist. Yes. On the way home. yes. That do would we be really? A, do we be really? A, yes. Yeah, yeah. So but, the, but the kids' bop version. No, fuck that. Do you think Kelly and Justin are still friends? Justin Gorini. Oh, remember from Justin to Kelly? The yeah. Movie? Oh, God. I don't. <laughs> it was a um, movie with Justin Gorini and Kelly Clarkson. Mm -hmm. I don't know who Justin Gorini he is. Was he the was the second place. I just like don't remember. It yeah. was so long ago. They were kind oh, really? of an iconic duo, though. Like Justin. they, they seem to be besties on the show, and then they made a movie together. And I thought they were dating. Were they dating? Like I don't think when they, because when she won, he like put <laughs> his face right towards hers, oh. and he went, "Yeah, baby." Oh my God. When I was a kid, I was like, they're dating. <laughs> He said, "Baby, I, sh I shipped them." <laughs> I gotta see a pic of this man so I can remember. He had a huge like afro. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh my god, yes. Oh yeah, he was so cute. Yeah. God, this was so long ago, you guys. It's actually it's, like cute. sickening. Like my friends and I would like watch American Idol together. We'd be like it's American Idol night, and like would call and vote. I'm gonna oh, call yeah. and vote. Yeah. You like text this number. Call and vote. Like, let me rest. They still do it. You still have I to know. vote. There's an well, app or you text. You text. Oh, you text. Yeah. Uh, just selling there's a poll on Instagram. Data. There's your poll on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. What was your first ringtone? Like your first song ringtone? <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure mine was booty, 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 booty. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That is such a throw. Like, and I had a phone. I don't remember the kind, but it was like it had a blue light that would like light up when the phone uh, would ring. I'm just so imagining like, like you're at a funeral and that's <laughs> it. No, it went off in some oh, like was I, I'd always have it and sometimes I forget to turn it off after school and I'd be at like practice and then it's just like playing in booty, the gym. Booty, booty, or, booty. Yeah. That no one does I that found. anymore. Like if you hear someone and their ringtone is a song, you're it's just a like boomer. it's a boomer. What yeah. year is it? Just vibrate, please. Yeah. I remember <laughs> my, my just like why is your phone like making phone noise? Ring. Are you kidding me? Well, I remember like my there was a time where like you you couldn't like buy the songs. I would like yeah, um, you could record it. Yeah, you would record like it. Like a note. Yes. And then set it as ringtone. Yes. <laughs> I had the, in the, on the very first Nokia phone. That yeah. was like just the brick with the keypad like the and the blue snake. one or whatever. Yeah, I had that. And you, there was literally a programmable MIDI keyboard in there. So you can like program a ringtone by like moving the notes and like oh yeah adding the notes and make your own ringtone. So I made the Top Gun what theme the song. Oh, how bang, did you know how to bang, do that? Because I played music. He knows music. So I just learned God, how to play it. I knew so how to play it on crazy. guitar, the Top Gun theme song. So my phone would be like, beep, 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 yeah, beep, beep, insane, beep, 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 beep. That is really funny. Yeah. Whoa. That's yeah. really cool. It was, mine was uh, Upside Down by Jack Johnson. But oh, it was because okay. this girl Sad, that I had a crush yeah. on, Malia, <laughs> she was like with my phone. And she's like, you need a ringtone. I'm going to buy you a ringtone. I'm like, pick whatever you, you want. And she, she bought yeah. Upside Down by Jack Johnson. Ugh. And so. Upside... Wait, you paid for the ringtone? Yeah, $1.29. Yeah, you, yeah. you guys were paying for them? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's oh right. we, we're not all musicians here. We can't program them on our well, notes. No, we can't I, produce I, our own yeah. ringtone. I just thought you just downloaded it from like. Kaza, Kaza or LimeWire and then you just put it onto your phone. No, you probably could have done that. I think I had different phases of it. Mm. Yeah. Time we could That's crazy. Them, yeah. People were paying money to have their well, phone ring. Well, I think ring. like initially. Yeah. 
What a crazy scam that was. I had was. a big yeah. Jack Johnson face. I, yeah, I went to a Jack Johnson concert. I like made out with a girl at a Jack Johnson concert. <laughs> I could have said you made out with Jack Johnson. I was like, too. jealous. Who was yeah. it? I can't remember. He's oh, got a great life. He just lives in Hawaii, yeah. plays acoustic guitar. No. It's like such a nice thing to just pl put on at the beach. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got a new he's album that's vibes. really good that oh. just came out. Yeah. Wow, Who, it... Someone saw him perform recently. Oh, Fibula did, I think. Mm. Yeah. That's so crazy. Connor. I haven't thought Fibula. about him in so long. Fibula? Jack Johnson or Connor? <laughs> Connor. <laughs> Your replacement. Um, uh, what, did you say what your ringtone was? I don't honestly yeah. don't. Remember. I had a Clay bunch. Aiken's discography. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, if I was yeah. invisible. Uh, do you guys use songs for your alarms in the morning? No, no. I don't have no. an alarm in the morning. You don't have an alarm? No. You just wake up with the the spirit of the sun. Yeah. I have that like har that slow harp one where it's yeah. like it starts off really soft and gets louder. It's like ding ding. Oh, ding, I've heard that one. Ding. I love that one. <laughs> Mine is church bells. <laughs> when ding, but like ding, people dong. will put like their favorite. I I did it once where I put a song that I liked as my alarm in like college, and within a week you're like I don't you like the song it. anymore because yeah. you're just like there's yeah. an adrenaline rush and you're just like it ruins whatever song. Yeah. It's I, not the vibe. I think anything, for me, anything that was my alarm, I'm going to hate yeah. eventually because I hate waking up. I found like the most gentle, like violin, like nice. song class. It's just like, and it like slowly gets louder. It's That's what I think alarm should be. It's crazy. Yeah. I like get why boomers are just fucking wound up all the time. Imagine <gasps> living your whole life and the only, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you're just like, why is this the <laughs> no. sound? Yeah. What is going on? It's You're getting PTSD first thing in the morning. Well, it was nice because I used to, when I was in my radio obsession days, I had a radio alarm clock and you could make the radio oh, wake you up. Yes. Remember that? Yep. So you could set it for like oh. 8 a.m. and it would just be whatever's on the radio. The radio Dirty would just pop. <laughs> Yeah. That's like, like, uh, that's that's like day. It's yeah. like I got you, babe. <laughs> yeah. Like, good, good morning, everybody. Get your booties on today it's gonna be a yes. cool one out there yeah That's that would so be cool to like funny. wake up to the radio but yeah what song oh, do you hate oh you I hate uh, i hate these i mean this is like a, not a hot system. Oh, my oh God. yeah. Oh, I worked at Chuck E. Cheese drops and they would Jupiter? play. No, you can't hate Drops of Jupiter. That's like an iconic masterpiece. <laughs> no, but masterpiece. it's the same band, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soul yeah, yeah, Sister, yeah. that song oh my God, is not Drops good. of Jupiter is like yeah. That's crazy. one of the, the world's band. greatest songs. They're completely opposite songs. Yeah. I think it's because it was like then so commercialized i feel like they were like jason mraz was bringing the ukulele yeah. back oh. and it was just kind of trendy jason mraz. i was in a uh bevmo and i heard uh it's the remedy it's... He... and i was like hell <laughs> yeah because you were born mraz. on the fourth of july freedom rings it you <laughs> got the colds and i got the little <laughs> fedora he's just like this cool guy with yeah. a fedora and a vest yeah. like scoop doobity doo <laughs> <laughs> jason mraz yeah i loved jason mraz. we should get I had him a on jason mraz <laughs> we gotta get jason I mraz would, in here i'd have a lot of questions <laughs> Um, what song do I hate? Uh, I don't know. I'm not like a big hater. There's a lot of people that I don't really like. Artists I don't really like. Sweet Home Alabama. How dare oh. I hear that? Bum, 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 I'm just like turn oh, it off. You can't do I that. I hate it. <laughs> Patricia loves oh that song. Oh my god, song. my roommates well, used to. I mean, it's in her but blood. that's not there. I, I hate Uptown Funk. Oh, no, that's yeah. Uptown that's a great song. Funk. You up. Uptown. Yeah, I or, think it's it depends on like where the, you're. His at. like singing is a little corny, but the trumpets, it's just like it's good. Yeah, you're like wrong. If, if a cover band played it and I was drunk, yeah, I'd that's dance. a fun time. It's too. I don't know. It's oh, I hate Hotel California. What? Oh, really? Such a lovely Not the place. Eagles. Yeah, I that could... hate that song. That song. It's you long. can look it up. The it, guitar there, solo. There are a lot of people who do hate that song. It's one of the best guitar solos. Like in great music. guitar solo. The song goes nowhere i think <laughs> it leaves you in this place of like what did i just uh experience, experience. it's kind of the vibe of the song that you're I, in it's a hang, I guess it's a hangout song but it just i i feel nothing hotel california don't I think like that's it. a good song i wonder what the most hated hotel songs are well, yeah. I, I remember when vh1 did the worst rock songs of all time number one was we built this city yeah, on rock and roll <laughs> oh yeah Okay, Baby by Justin Bieber is the number one most hated song, and I just feel like that's inaccurate. Yeah, no, that's I, don't think. I think one. I think that's it had the most number of dislikes on YouTube. Yeah. When okay, well, they yeah, allowed... the other ones are Friday, My Humps by the Black Eyed Peas, The Ugh. Cotton Eye Joe, which like I stand by that. That's oh. a pretty terrible song. But if you hear it, uh, I guess I wouldn't want to dance. Find right that Soldier Boy. That's not well. Yeah, that is bad. I hate Fergalicious. Oh God! What? Yeah. Fergalicious definition make them because it reminds me of that scene. Do you remember the movie? It wasn't. Remember, there was like scary movie, and they made date movie. Oh yes. yeah. And then they made like super movie or whatever. Yeah. There was the one where they go to Willy Wonka, 
like they do a parody and they're making like the chocolate but it's out of like people it's really <laughs> gross and they do fergal and they do it to oh fergalicious God, wait, what? and it's so gr it's like uh willy wonka is like a uh um you know cannibal? cannibal oh god and they play that song and it's just it makes me sick to my weird. stomach that's, that's really me. weird um i just saw the thing that's like um the crazy frog oh bing bing i don't know i don't Bang. really like hate a lot yeah i think when i hear it i'll know but i don't have any on the top of my head there's like i don't really this is like so anti-feminist of me but like i don't really like a lot of female artists i don't like, like a lot of artists. male artists i like i really really only listen to like females singing to me because there's a degree where some men when they're singing i feel like it's for like a female kind mm. of or god it gets too <laughs> it's too little too sensual like too in my ear and i'm like i i can't Enough. do that two maroon five yeah so it's interesting that i have a preference yeah. i mostly listen to females like i like i feel like in terms of like pop i really don't like a lot of female artists but like you know like i love like Phoebe Bridgers and like that genre of women that are just really like chill. You're not like bumping Katy Perry or. Well, like, oh, I didn't say Katy Perry. Like, I, okay. Hot take. I really can't get into any Halsey music. I think her voice is very annoying. I'm not an Ariana Grande fan because I don't know what she says ever. <laughs> right. Yeah. She's um, always kind of mumbling. Yeah. Like, yeah I literally don't, like don't know what she's saying. She sounds too good. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's like, it's a 10 out of 10 vocally, yeah. but like, yeah. also I mean, people who are like Ariana Grande stands are always like a little bit off. Like they're not, <laughs> are you an Ariana Grande stand? I wouldn't say I'm a stan. I like her. Yeah. But, but like, what are there you are people who. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's ridiculous. Rile up, why, the, why, rile up why, the internet. Why would you say something like that? <laughs> Are you talking about the girls who like dress up like her? Like, <laughs> you know what are you doing? Who's like taking your side to make Michael look oh, like, no, like, like, Why would you say something? <laughs> I literally like thought Matt was like, "Why would you say that?" No, he's doing the sleeves like Ariana. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's <funny>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. But yeah, there are people who dress up like her. That's what I'm saying. Like the people who are like, yeah, yeah, like dress up like her and like will like. I feel I don't like know. it's like any fandom though. No, but like Taylor Swift people, I feel like are more the most normal that I've encountered of like. <laughs> I guess maybe I don't know. I don't read all this stuff on the internet, but yeah. in my day to day life, people I interact with. No, I think they are like yeah, pretty normal. It's just funny because they're very conspiracy. Or like, Ariana Grande. Well, they're like too. mentally <laughs> no. unwell. Who is <laughs> Taylor Swift? Fan. Like yeah. Swifties. Like I feel like we're very like normal Taylor Swift fans. Like there's people that are more psycho than you. Yeah, I don't yeah. think we're. I, the only we're reason we know about theories is because we like see them, but yeah. people come up with them, and it's yeah. It's okay. Crazy. Interesting. Yeah, fandoms are funny. Yeah. Right, they're Swifties, yeah, that's what they're called. Swifties, the Harry Styles <laughs> fandom is like pretty wild. We should make a collective playlist after this and share it with everybody of <gasps> yeah. all of our uh, oh. musicians that we've been listening I to. I know what you can do is you can do like a group listening session, and then it'll mix all of like songs that I listen to, that you listen to, that you listen to, and you listen to. Spotify will oh, automatically yeah. do it. For that's us? Cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, pretty oh. cool. it's really interesting. I don't know, I might have some weird stuff. Yeah, but it's like fun, because then and then it shows you next to each person, like say that there was like a Phoebe Bridger song or something, it would have like probably your icon and my icon. Oh, cool, it's so like we have like we bonding both, one. Yeah. We gotta do that. That's yeah. really cool. It's really fun. We did it, we had like a hibachi night, and there was like 10 of us, and we all, um went on to the playlist so then it was a whole because yeah. we were like what do we listen to so then it was a whole playlist of that stuff everyone that everyone can get, can get behind yeah. i love that that's a great idea do it's you really guys cool. do playlists like are you one of those people that has like driving flying workout no, bad bitch I like whatever i used to be a big playlist girly um not been... so much anymore mainly just because i don't listen to like a ton of new music so it's just like i listen to my old playlists yeah, yeah i've been slacking on... like Ella has like 50 playlists. It's yeah, insane. She seems very music. She's yeah. very like at, when I went on our Spotify, she was showing me like, oh, just put on this playlist. And it's like bad bitch women artists. So I'm just like, <laughs> OK, cool. That's one. She's got like flying, going to Italy, beach day, like yeah. working out. I'm just like, that's real. I love wow. the dedication. Yeah. I don't know I, enough music. I feel I'd be all Taylor Swift. I have, <laughs> yeah, I have a Bad lot of playlists, but I don't know how, I don't update them often like that. Right, right, like I right. have a playlist that like if I want to listen to country music that I made like five years ago, but like I should update them, you know, but I just don't. New music scares me. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I just want to live in my bubble of Taylor Swift, the 1975. Yeah. <laughs> I know, for real. No and like music. all of the emo nostalgia songs that I listened to in 2006. Yeah. Right. Well, we have some listener submissions 
that we're going to get into. Uh, if you don't know, we do listener <laughs> submissions <laughs> every episode. Uh, make sure to follow our Instagram account because we post the theme of that episode that week. And then you can email goodinfluencespodcast at gmail.com with your questions, comments, concerns, etc. Okay, this person said, I feel like the general quality in new released music has gone down so much. I hear about artists I like releasing new albums and get all excited just to be disappointed over and over again. Also, let's not even talk about what's topping the hit lists. Feels like music is becoming more of a money grab rather than art. And of course, I do get that music is people's income, so it's work, but I'm tired of being disappointed. I also feel like I sound 60 years old. Now reminiscing about the good old times when, in fact, I am literally 19 years old, lol. I also have an addiction to buying vinyls. Help me stop or help me justifying it. Hmm. I thought maybe this is like a good standpoint for you as like a person who plays music. Like, do you feel like the quality? I think that this person has existed in literally every generation of people. Like, <laughs> yeah. when we were growing up, I bet you the people that were 19 were like, Backstreet Boys, totally. and five guys harmonizing over shitty pop music. This is terrible. <laughs> Where you got to listen to Nirvana and like find other stuff and older stuff. Like everyone always feels that stuff that they like and pop music is never cool enough. Obviously, I think that we go on. Well, I was just going to say, like, if you don't like what's being like given to you, go and find some music that like you've never heard before. Find some like reviewers that you like that maybe talk about bands and artists that you've never heard of before. If you just listen to the top 40 or like whatever's coming yeah. out, you're obviously going to hear like that's the same thing over and over. But um, and there's also plenty of music that's already been released. Like you don't necessarily need to listen to new music. You can find good stuff from the 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s. Music is endless. Yeah. Don't just like be upset because. Harry Styles and Taylor Swift sound like pop production because that's what they are. Well, I think 10 years ago, pop was much worse. Yes. Like compared to where it's at now, pop in like the early 2010s was like 10 nights the night. We're going to live it up. <laughs> I got a feeling like TikTok. On, it was okay. the most, I think, really cheap <laughs> shallow pop like and now i feel like it's a little has a little bit more grit and black eyed peas like all that kind of shit oh, just like, i'm Continue. sure That's i think icon. right now it's a little bit better but in terms of like artists disappointing you you always need to be prepared for that because artists i think really owe you nothing and yes. they're going to um they need to evolve themselves of what they want to do so always lower your expectations and you'll be surprised but don't ever think you're going to get what you got last time. Yeah. A good exercise that Matt and I did a while back is you go through like Rolling Stone or Billboard's top albums of every year, starting from like 1950. And you can listen to, you'll discover so many songs you've never heard. Like you can even start in the seventies or the eighties, but like if you're 19 years old, I bet you have not heard the top 100 albums from 1980. Yeah. And like there's sounds in there that you've never heard before. There's like, bands you've never heard of like you're only 19 you're not some grizzled vet that can't let you've, you've heard everything like just go and find go new listen music. to pet sounds by the beach boys yes. yeah. or like You'll every be beatles album or every led zeppelin album totally. Pink Floyd. Or, like the first clay. <laughs> or the first clay <laughs> <laughs> it's got some catchy hits on yeah, the to to that. i will also say like uh I, I might have been you who said it but like there have been so many artists that like they were my life and then their sound changes and i'm like Moving on. Yeah. No, it's then literally like, okay, then I don't listen to that anymore. Yeah, just don't listen to it. Yeah. it, it I do get the, like, you're attached to that artist. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like a death. Yes. But there's so much out there that you can just, like, fry your brain with that it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. Absolutely. Good question. Absolutely. Great question. I thought it was pretty... Did I been uh, saying that too much? No. no absolutely. Uh, I was just, like... Oh. <coughs> copying you. Know? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, we might have touched on this a little, but hi, everyone. I'm a huge Swifty, and I know the girlies are, too. Have y'all been following the recent theories about TS10? Thoughts? Actually, no. I saw well, I'll, I'll take this one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw somebody was like, it's confirmed she's in Nashville right now working on oh. Taylor Swift 10, but that's the only well, thing I've uh, ever seen. According to the Jet Setter flight log, she's in Burbank. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. So who the fuck knows? What's um, TS10? Taylor, Taylor Swift's 10th, 10th, like album. 10th album. It's been, there's been nine? Yeah, yeah. plus her re recording Shit. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. I know. Um, yeah, I haven't been following a lot. I was hoping maybe you would know more information than I do, no. but I don't know anything. But also, it's like every time something like this comes up, it never it never happens. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I think that's why I've started like removing myself from the Taylor <laughs> Swift theories because I'm like the amount of times during the pandemic I got excited to just be let down. Mm. Yeah. 
more times. It's like than an I abusive relationship. A hundred percent. You want to go? You want to go get dinner? Actually, I am gonna go with my yeah. friends, and you're just like. Bah, bah. But it was <laughs> also like not abusive from her because she was never the one right. giving it's, you it's this. It's the fans telling you. Yeah. Well, I saw she this. She would very clearly be like, "This is coming out on Friday," and then right. the fans would be like, "Okay, this is what's actually coming yeah, out yeah, on Friday." Yeah. Oh and then my I'm like, god! Yes, I'm telling you, it's not. And then yeah, it's like I've a fucking that, like, advert Frank commercial. Frank Ocean, I thought like there was a whole year where we were left in limbo. That he was going to put something yes. out. Yes. Yeah, oh. And so I, now I, I don't, I can't follow anything yeah. like that. Frank Ocean. Um, and then the last one was just about thoughts on Harry's house. Oh, it's oh, my favorite al- Harry album. Oh. Yeah. What'd you say? It's my favorite Harry album Yeah, so far. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm like, I obviously am obsessed with Harry, but I don't listen to his music a lot, but I really like the new one. Like I put that one on. I wanted him to get a little bit more weird. I thought it. I thought it was a little bit like safe. It's he's still being very cool, very rocker, very like you know having fun with the fashion. I want him to get like David Bowie weird. Yeah. I want him to just like put on some wacky makeup and like dye his hair we'll a there. different Make, thing. Like, yeah. a seventeen minute song that's just like insane and yeah. spacey and yeah. I, I want... think he's working his way up yeah. there because he's still very much like Jagger a little. Yeah. He's not Bowie yet. I want him to go through a Bowie phase. That's funny because the first song, Music for a sushi, sushi Restaurant, when I put it on, I was like, oh, this is going to be weird. So I thought it was a little bit different. But yeah. I feel like that's the only one that's really. <laughs> yeah, because it just starts like. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like Harry's house compared to himself, maybe it's not. It, it's like a, a little weird. bit different, but compared to like all of music, it's not as weird as yeah. you would like it to be. Totally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's true. Good point. <laughs> What? We <laughs> hate Harry Styles. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, well, this was fun. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited to listen to our American Idol playlist. Oh my god, me too. We're gonna put on red high heels the second we get in the car. Oh, oh my god. Thanks for watching this episode of Good Influences. We hope you liked hearing us talk about music, concerts, CDs, cassettes, uh, boomers, you name it. (laughs) Um, We had a great time. Uh, Give us a watch on YouTube, listen on Apple or Spotify, leave a comment, review, like, subscribe, all those good things. It really helps us out. Uh, We love reading your comments. Thank you for all the love that we've gotten on these past few episodes. Um, It's really cool to see this thing come from nothing into this this incredible community. Um, Send us emails. Follow us on Instagram. And uh, we'll see you next week. week. Bye, Bye, guys. Let's harmonize. All right. Three, two, one. Bye. 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 (laughs) Every speaker in America just (laughs) blew